No matter how big or small the painting task is that you're about to tackle, having the right equipment is essential. We're going to show you all the painting equipment that you need to tackle most tasks. First of all, always remember your safety equipment. We've got some goggles. We've got a hat to protect the hair so we get cut a bit covered in paint. We've got some rubber gloves if you're using solvent based paints. And we've got a cover overalls which cover all your clothes and keep them protected. Otherwise you can wear some old clothes. Why do we need to sand before painting? Well, sanding will actually prepare the wall so it allows the paint or the bonding liquid to actually bond to the wall in much better and will give you much longer lasting durability of your paint surface. Always remember, we like to use a sanding block. A sanding machine is great and easy, but it's quite aggressive and you can end up making some serious gouges into your wall. The first step is to basically start off with some sandpaper. Depending on your surface finish and the condition of the paint, you want to start off with a, a rough grit sandpaper and then move on to something lighter like 100 or a 120 or even 220. Wire brushes are mainly used on the surface preparation of old paint and rusted surfaces, which means they're ideal for metal surfaces. They come in all different shapes and sizes. You can even get an attachment which connects to your drill, which is a round wire brush and it's ideal for those really tough surfaces and getting into little nooks and crannies like burglar bars. During preparation of a surface, you may want to remove some old paint, some putty, or even some glue. A scraper is an ideal tool for that. It's got a sharp edge on the front, but watch out for these corners because they can actually do some serious damage and scar your wall if you're not careful. Once you're finished, if you've got any old putty or any glue or paint which is dried in your scraper, do yourself a favour, give it a good clean with some mineral turpentine. That way it's as good as new next time you need to use it. When filling a crack, knock off the loose bits of plaster, brick and paint. Open it up if the crack is too small to work in. To ensure a long lasting bond between the surface and filler, use plaster primer before filling the crack and before using a filler compound and a putty knife or a filler knife to press in the filler into the crack. The filler knife is similar to a scraper but it has a more flexible blade which makes it easier to press filler into the crack and scrape off the extra to leave the crack filled and flush with the surface. Mutton cloth is a cotton weave material and it's ideal for polishing, buffing, cleaning it's quite an absorbent material too, so it's perfect for sucking up any spills and stuff like that. It's a good idea to keep several pieces on hand, so if you do make a spill of paint, you can quickly mop it up straight away before it dries and leaves a horrible mess. Disposable overalls are a good way to cover up your clothing. What's nice about this material, it's actually quite thin and able to breathe and allow the heat in and out. They even have elastic ankles and cuffs so you can actually keep all the dust out. Zip it up. You've got a hood on the back. Pop on your glasses. And you look the part. Here we've got a guard. Now this is ideal, lazy man's way, should we say, of not having to mask up the whole area. You can use it on glass, wooden door frames, window frames, whatever you want to use it for. Basically you just push that up. Paint along the side, put it away, and you'll see there's a perfect line there. You can see I've actually painted over the guard, and when I move it away, you've got a perfect line. Here we have painter's tape and normal masking tape. They basically have the same function, ideal at masking any area off, keeping the line crisp, neat and tidy. The masking tape adhesion is quite a lot stronger than the painter's tape. So what happens when you pull it off, sometimes you can end up pulling the paint off and you're going to have to do more touch-ups. The painter's tape also comes in handy when masking off fixtures, 
making stripes, patterns on your walls, especially if it's a new painted surface. Brushes can be washed off with turpentine, but a greener option is to actually use polycell brush cleaner. What's nice about this, it actually penetrates into the brush, removes all the paint, and then just washes off with water. To clean brushes used for oil-based paint, work a small amount through the bristles, then rinse with water until it runs clear. Hang brush or rollers up to dry, and allow the remaining mixture to separate. The clear top layer can be reused, while the sediment must be disposed of correctly. Your local builders will ensure that it is disposed of correctly if you take it to them. Most paint needs stirring before use. However, non-drip paint does not. Always read the paint in before stirring. You can use a clean piece of wood with holes drilled in it, or you can buy paint stirrer paddles. You can even get an attachment that goes onto your drill and stirs it up automatically for you. As you know, when painting a room, it can always get quite messy. So do yourself a favor, cover up the floors with drop cloths, Mask up all the areas you don't want paint on, and most importantly, protect your furniture. Cover it up with some plastic sheets and keep it dirt free and paint free. And remember, if you're using plastic on the floor, keep in mind if you're using ladders because it can be quite slippery and you don't want to have an accident. It is always advisable to decant your paint when using it. If using paint brushes, then a paint pot is necessary. This will ensure that any bristles that fall out, any dirt that is picked up on the brushes, does not contaminate your entire tin of paint. Disposable liners are also available, which makes cleaning much easier. Always choose a paintbrush with your project in mind. This will help you choose the best one for the job. If you're stocking a workshop, choosing a quality brush will last you a lifetime. Paint brushes are used for all types of paint, as well as lacquer, varnish and oil. They are also used to paint trim and to cut in when you roll a wall. Quality brushes actually improve with their use. Basically, any loose bristles will come out, and as you use them, the tips become rounded. And that allows the paint to absorb better into the brush, it means you don't have to dip it in so often. You'll also see they've got a stainless steel ferrule at the top here, which between washing and cleaning, it's not going to start rusting. So this is an ideal brush which can last you a lifetime, but make sure you clean it properly after every use. There are loads of cheaper brushes on the market, but not always ideal. As you actually find out, a lot of their bristles tend to come out, so you've got to give them a good clean. And then throughout the whole job, you're always losing a bristle here and there. So that creates a bit of a hassle. However, Bear in mind what surface you're going to use on. If you're using it a rough surface, then it doesn't really matter. And I also find that sometimes it's not even worth cleaning. Just throw it away. It's cheaper to buy a new one. You'll also see this is not a stainless steel ferrule. So after several washes, it's going to start going rusty and more bristles are going to start falling out. What brush size to choose? Well, for the smaller jobs, or whether you've got to do touch-ups on work, on toys, chairs, interior trim, you're going to use a 25mm. For the slightly bigger option, there's a 38mm available for small panels, window frames, and maybe downpipes. Then obviously the sizes are increasing up to a 50mm, which is for small projects including doors, tabletops, and cabinets. You can also move over to a 75mm, which is more for your medium to large projects including floorboards, skirting, and fence posts. Then you come up to a 100mm brush, which is ideal for large flat areas such as walls, floors, ceilings, or even a roof. You get different types of angled brushes. Some of them have an angled handle. This is ideal for getting around behind pipes and tight corners that you just can't get into and reach. You also get an angled bristle. Now this is perfect for corners on a wall where you don't want that brush to be bumping up against the other wall which you're not going to be painting. I'll quickly show you now. That's where a normal brush would be. Now we're painting over at an angle. You can see the bristles still stay parallel to the wall, but the handle is actually offset. Natural bristle brushes are often used for varnishes, oils, glues, resins, 
and even fiberglass. Unpainted wooden handle brushes are ideal for resins and solvent based paints. The reason being there isn't any paint which is going to get corroded and eaten by the resin and going to contaminate the rest of your paintwork. They're also preferred for oil based paints but not suitable for latex paints. For latex paints you have to use a synthetic bristled brush. Hang your brush, place horizontally or prop upside down in a jar to store. The bristles need to be protected so never store them with pressure on the tip or side of the bristles. When you buy paint, if there's an advised brush or roller to use with the paint, it will tell you on the back of the tin. Rollers are ideal for covering large areas such as walls, doors and ceilings quickly and smoothly. Foam or mohair pile is ideal on a smooth surface while lamb's wool or nylon pile is best on a textured one. They are always used in conjunction with a roller tray. Professionals tend to use a sheepskin roller as they hold more paint and are easier to work with, less splatter and fewer fibres shed. Mohair is suitable for solvent based enamel. These have a fine nap and give a high quality finish on smooth surfaces. They provide less splatter and are virtually lint free. A wool has a good paint pickup and release which means less splatter and a long lifespan. They are also suitable for use with varnishes, enamels and other solvent based products. There are thick nap synthetic rollers for rough and textured walls and fine nap rollers for smoother finishes. These are often the most cost effective. Often you get some combination rollers which mix natural and synthetic fiber in their nap. A foam roller is a general purpose roller used for smooth, lightly textured surfaces. They do not give a high quality finish. Some foam rollers can be used for paint effects. Mini foam rollers are suitable for all types of paint and over small to medium size areas. A paint tray is used for holding paint to load rollers. Some new roller trays are designed for use on a ladder. And you can also get deeper paint trays for use with thicker rollers. Extension poles are ideal for use on high walls and ceilings. It also means you haven't got to keep going up and down the ladder wasting time. Most rollers have a hole in the underside of the handle which you just slide over the top of the pole and fasten down nice and secure. It's also got an adjustable extension so you can raise the height and length of the pole. Ideal, you can stand away from the wall and then just roll up and down. Also good for ceilings because you don't have to move your ladder to get to different places every five seconds. Hang up your roller sleeves when not in use to prevent the pile from being flattened but ensure they don't lean on a wall or flat surface. Here are a few words you might like to know. Blistering. These are bubbles that sometimes form while the paint is drying. It can be from moisture in wood, painting another coat before the first is dried properly, or from too much heat or grease under the paint when applying it. Blushing. If your lacquer dries cloudy when it should be clear, this is caused by the moisture in the lacquer when the solvent evaporates too quickly. Bubbles. Air bubbles in drying paint can be caused by excessive rolling or vigorous mixing of paint that results in trapped air. Chalking. Formation of powder on the top layer of paint often caused by disintegration of the paint due to weathering. Cracking or flaking. When a newly painted surface cracks, something went wrong. Either the surface was incorrectly prepared, the paint dried too fast if it was on a hot day, or the paint was stretched too far in application. The guys at Builders are ready, willing and able to assist you with any painting queries you may have.